Hi, right. Uh, hello. <laughs> um, this is very exciting. It's our first YouTube live. Um, we're going to be doing a Q&A chat with Jade Oliver, hello. who <laughs> is a very experienced eBay seller. Um, she's going to be telling us a little bit her, about her business, her story, how she got started. And also we're going to talk about eBay for Business Awards, aren't yep. we? We are. Um, now, we know some of you have already joined. Um, so just to give me and Jade a bit of a sense of how many people we've got there if you could just type in hello or something like that so that we can see that um you can hear us okay <laughs> and that everything is coming through okay so um I can see there were a couple of comments that came in even before we started which is great great to have people waiting uh waiting in the wings to see what we're going to be talking about um got Josh saying hi, Jay. We've got the sewing machine man saying hi. We've got Shazad saying hi. We've got Tom saying hello oh. as well. So I'm going to be watching all the questions as they come in. Um, I've got a few questions that I'm going to be asking Jade myself. I think we're probably going to be chatting um, for about half now, I think. Um, it's probably going to fly by. Um, <laughs> Oh, yes, we can, look, we can see lots of other people saying hello. <laughs> so Julius, Hannah, Cookie and the Hayden, Syed, right. I'm sure we're not going to be able to call out to everybody. <laughs> so let's just get started by just telling us a bit about you and okay. what you do. Okay, so um, I'm Jade and I have an interior store on eBay. We're called Heavenly Homes and Gardens. We've been going for about seven and a half years now on eBay. Oh. Um, five and a half years I was running that business whilst I was um, a solicitor. And for the last okay. two years years or so I've been doing it full time as my main job. Wow yeah. okay so that's really good so <laughs> tell me a bit more about the type of things that you sell. So um, we do all kinds of homewares we specialize in really realistic faux flowers and plants nice. um, but we have actually nearly 3,000 product lines now of all sorts of different things from plant pots to cushions to lighting you name it if, it's, if it looks pretty to go in a house we probably sell it. <laughs> <laughs> And I've heard a rumour that your house is actually used in some of the photography. Is it that is. true? Yes, okay. it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A very nice taste, I have oh, to say. Thank you. <laughs> um, right. So you said that you were running your business alongside being a solicitor. Yes. Tell me, what, what was that like? <laughs> I mean, being a solicitor is yeah. a pretty full-on job. How did you find the time? It was quite stressful and I didn't sleep okay. very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it started off when I was actually training to be a solicitor mm. and I had some quite high um, postgraduate course fees to repay. Um, and so I thought, what can I do to earn a bit of extra money? I need some pocket money to help, you know, to pay for my debts and, and just general living. Um, okay. And so I thought, let's see what I can maybe sell on eBay. Um, and I'd spotted at the time, this was probably about seven and a half years ago, so I'd spotted at the time an emerging trend for upcycled furniture. Um, and I thought, let's let's give it a try. So I read all the books, I learned how to rip upholster chairs, and um, a family member gave me a set of dining chairs um, for free. And so I, I, I painted them and I did all the seats and made them look really pretty, took some nice pictures, um, put the first one on eBay, and within five minutes, I put it on a bike now, and within five minutes it had sold. Oh. So um, I got a bit I'm sure people want to know what your secret yeah. was. <laughs> no, it was, yeah, I'm, I'm still not sure myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we kind of progressed from that and started doing more and more furniture. And I kind of spent my weekends constantly sort like sourcing bits and painting things and shipping it all over the country. Um, um, and then as time progressed, I realized that this was actually really impractical to have all this big furniture in your house and in your garage. And it was driving my husband crazy. Okay. Um, so we decided to move into homewares and kind of smaller things that were easier to ship. Um, and kind of did that as a sideline to start off with. And so I found a nice supplier for silk flowers um, and thought I'd give them a try. And they ended up being really popular. Oh. And so we've just naturally progressed and just tried things. And it's kind of, it's evolved quite organically, really, um, to the point that now we have, um, there's a team of five of us. We've got a big warehouse. We're about to open our first bricks and mortar store within the next oh, few weeks, which is quite exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's often different. you hear about people doing it the other way around. Absolutely. That they had their store first. Yeah. And then they think about <laughs> branching out and, and getting a yeah. the global market with eBay. But for it to build up to that yeah. extent, you can actually open a shop yourself. Exactly. It's and it's only because of the, the eBay business in the background that we feel confident enough to open a shop. Um, yeah. So the plan is sort of, it, it's it's at the front of our packing room, actually. We're lucky enough that our um, our warehouse has a really beautiful shop at the front. So we thought, let's make use of it. And um, the plan is to use the staff in the shop to also support the online. So during the week, they can be sat at a computer doing messages, helping book couriers. They're kind of, so hopefully the whole business will be nicely integrated. Fingers crossed. 
great. <laughs> so it, it sounds like when you first started out, there was you and maybe your husband yeah. helping out from time to time. Mm -hmm. How many people are there in your business now? So there's five of us now. Um, it's quite a family affair. So my auntie works full time for me running the packing room in the warehouse. Nice. Uh, my sister works as well full time doing listings and sort of making the website look nice and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we've got two other guys who help do packing as well. So yes, <laughs> okay. And I know for a lot of people, when they start out in business for themselves, particularly if they've got a nice, secure job, mm -hmm. what you hear from friends and family is like, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> like, are you giving up something that's certain for something that yeah. is perhaps a little bit unpredictable? Sure. How, did you go through that yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it took okay. probably years of agonizing uh, to decide whether or not to leave my career because, you know, I was in a good job. Mm. I was a corporate lawyer. I was on a kind of, you know, career path going like that. And it was very secure. Um, so to make the decision to leave, that wasn't easy. It didn't help that, um, yeah, lots of friends and family were like, oh, just wait a bit longer, wait a bit yeah. longer, save a bit more money. Um, but I just thought, time's going on I'm you know I, running your own business is always going to be time consuming and I think I'd prefer to do that while I was younger and while I have sort of more energy and freedom to do that yeah. yeah so I just thought let's try it and and if the worst happens and I can't make it work I can always go back to my old career if I really have to oh. fortunately two and a half years later I haven't had to do that yet <laughs> <laughs> well I'm looking through to see if we've got um some questions yet um it's got a really nice comment from Rob who's saying he's He's been looking forward to this interview, and what an inspirational person! Oh, that's okay. So, that's a really nice comment to have so far. <laughs> um, we've also got a question from Shazad who's asking, Do you use third party applications with regard to listing, inventory management, CRM, etc.? Are there any that you'd recommend? Personally, I don't actually within our within our company. Um, it's something we always do ourselves. Um, I know there are lots of companies out there. Um, I know a lot of people use Limworks. It's not a company I've ever used, but a lot of okay. other sellers that I speak to in the group are, are a big fan of them. Yeah. Um, but I personally don't have any experience. I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, and I think there are yeah. so many different tools yeah. out there. And everybody's got to make their own decision uh -huh. about what's actually right for their business sure. and their setup. Because you're you're just opening a physical shop yeah. and quite often people are thinking about well how do I manage the inventory that's actually yeah. in my shop and for sale exactly. as well as what's on yeah. my, my eBay shop as well yeah. and if they have their own website as well how mm -hmm. do you make sure that's all synced up so that you don't oversell things exactly yeah no, and that's something we're looking at at the moment sort of working out how to go through that so yeah <laughs> but as, as you say I think it's very much bespoke to each business as yeah well. so that's... everyone who's thinking about using um some software to help run it run and manage your ebay business do your homework and yeah. um, just make sure it's the right kind of solution for you now and also if it's something that you're going to grow into mm -hmm. later yeah um, because some of them have different pricing structures as well mm -hmm. so i'm gonna ask you a bit about the ebay for business okay. awards mm -hmm. because um i don't know if everybody realizes but joe was an award winner last year yeah. mm -hmm. um do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, then? absolutely. So I was um, the winner of the Career Change Award last year, which was really like flattering and really nice. Um, I almost didn't enter because <laughs> I, I, I really knew you did it. I saw the email come through and I thought, oh, that sounds really great. The prizes sounded really interesting. Um, and I thought maybe I've got a story to tell. But when it came to actually writing it down, I thought, maybe other people won't actually be interested in this so I, oh, I say hey so close to not entering um but I'm really glad I did I, I thought no I've said I'm gonna do it so I did and I sent it off um and when I got the phone call the email to say that I was a finalist I couldn't <gasps> believe it I was over the moon yeah so was there part of you that thought, hang on is this a wind up yeah, it was, no, yeah, I mean, I, yeah we did we, we had a celebration that evening in the stock room it was good yeah oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah and you said that, that like the prizes were interesting things like that. yeah like, what did you actually so get as an award winner how it worked on on our year was there were I think nine finalists and we'd all won um, a different category so I was the career change award but there was also a charity award there was um kind of you know there was all there was an expert award there's kind of all different things okay. um and on the night it was really fun everyone kind of had made a video in advance eBay had sent a really fun t a film crew out and we'd all made these videos kind of telling our story um and they were we were put into a cinema on the night with a load of um yeah. people from eBay and everyone got to vote so all the videos were played and everyone got mm -hmm. to vote on the grand prize winner on the night um and the grand prize winner got a trip to america and five thousand pounds which wow. is incredible yeah um, I, to anyone's I mean it really yeah. was 
word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we weren't the grand prize winner on the night, but um, for all of us who, who didn't win that prize, we still took home a thousand pounds each. Uh, we got a free anchor store for a year, which the value of that is, I think it's over three thousand pounds in, wow. in shop fees. Yeah, which has been amazing. Um, we got concierge service for a year, which is the specialist phone line, which is so helpful. The guys in the concierge are so so good. If you've got any problems, they will help you out. Um, and off the back of that as well, although it wasn't sort of a prize on the night, there's been um, so much media coverage that's mm. generated um, a huge social media following and, and big sales and massive sign up to our mailing list and all that kind of stuff. Wow. So, yeah, and I think I've seen you in some newspaper articles and things we've like that. We've done well. a lot, yeah. So, we've, we've done sort of magazines, we've done several national newspapers, we've done national radio international radio so mm. i did a um show in america which was really fun there's been a right. lot yeah all off the back of the awards so. and was that the ebay for business podcast it wasn't although we did, did oh, i right. did record okay. that in america yes uh no this was the kim commando show which in america is their sort of tech talk show it's the biggest weekend talk radio show i think in the states cool. yeah and so it's kind of all about technology and um yes yeah, so they wanted to talk about how to run a, an ebay store so it was really interesting oh, wow. yeah it was fun okay. yeah so i i mean you must see people talking about the awards in mm -hmm. some of the online groups that you're a member of and do you see people wondering if they should apply yeah or not? i've had a lot of messages actually from people saying oh i'd love to do it but i feel i'm not there yet oh my my company's not big enough yet um but actually i think it isn't about business size at all i would yeah. encourage anybody to enter you know you might be feeling like me oh my story's not interesting enough but you might surprise yourself um mm. I, and it isn't about size um it's actually one of the grand prize winners the, the grand prize winner last year was uh, it was a charity shop which were an amazing really worthy cause but they in comparison to the size of the other companies there I think they were probably the smallest um, mm. but it's more about your story your background your history what your plans for your future are you don't have to have grown this enormous business to be sort of a you know a, a possible contender yeah and I think the comment here was about being an inspirational person that can come in so many different forms absolutely yeah um somebody could be inspirational because they're dealing with a, a personal issue yeah absolutely. and they run their ebay shop as a way to give them the flexibility that they need yeah. or that there's something they really want to give back on or they're they've grown to a size where they're creating jobs for people exactly. um or bringing new products to market yeah. so i think there's all sorts of different reasons um so if you're on the fence a little bit <laughs> and you're not sure and you think should i should i do it yeah um Absolutely. it's well worth doing i think it? so and the other thing i took away from entering was um the process of writing my entry involves writing out your business story um, mm. and i found that really quite a nice process i think when you run a business um it's you're always looking at the future you're always looking where do i need to be next how do i need to get there and you sometimes forget to take stock of how far you've actually come That's so true. And, and it was only once i sat down to write it all out i thought actually do you know what? i have done a lot this was actually and it was quite a nice way to give yourself a little pat on the back to kind of just note down how far you've come and really take a moment to stop and appreciate that was lovely so it's worth it just for that anyway it's I really say good. yeah and I think all of us like if you're in a, a job or something you get that sort of performance appraisal every now and then yeah, don't you to find out how you're doing but when you're working for yourself it's a little bit harder than that you yeah. can sort of look at the numbers and that indicates like how things are going financially but it doesn't show you how you've progressed as a person, as exactly. a business, all the learning that you've done along the way, all mm -hmm. the mistakes. Yeah. Because everybody makes them. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. So let's have a look and see if there's any more questions. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting one from, uh, I'm not sure, if it's Sagar or Sagar. I'm sorry if I'm not pro pronouncing that correctly. What to sell for Christmas 2019? Ooh. Wow. <laughs> I mean, we do a lot of Christmas, actually. It's by far busiest time of year. Um, our sales almost, well, more than triple at Christmas. Uh, we do the decoration side of things. So in terms of, like... Um the, the, the key toy for this year I'm not too sure um but I know the interior trends for Christmas coming up <laughs> <laughs> so yeah for us it's kind of all about really nice Christmas decorations we do like a lot of fair trade things things from making recycled glass um but that oh, are really they? beautiful as well oh, yeah so 
Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that recycling? Because I know it's a topic that's on a lot of people's minds at the moment, yeah. having a sustainable business in some way. And it's really important to us, especially I think in the interiors world, which is so trend led. You know, I don't mm. want to be sort of part of this throwaway society where you, you know you buy something and it's only in for six months and then you, you throw it. Um, so for mm. us, it's really important that what we do sell it is sustainable. So all of our Christmas decorations are made from recycled glass, and the the ties that they're hung with are because they're all made in India um, are made from recycled sari fabric um which is lovely yeah and then we also do things like um for, for the garden all of our rugs and cushions that are for outdoors um are made from recycled plastic bottles so they literally melt the plastic down and turn Fantastic. it into this amazing fabric that feels as soft as cotton plus it's waterproof so there's so many benefits like apart from the sustainable environmental side it, that you know they're also really useful really beautiful products and yeah. let's hope that when somebody is looking to trade up or something like that that they they then want to sell that back on ebay exactly exactly yeah <laughs> let's keep it out of the landfills right <laughs> um right we've we've got a, we've got a couple of questions that are a little bit off topic that's about the global shipping program and i don't think you're okay. going to be able to answer that okay. because it's about the price thing oh, it, so. okay. i mean i can try and help on that if you like I, mean, um, I know. About, I think this one's yeah. specifically oh, okay. more for eBay, right so then. it's not something I'm going to be able to answer today. But maybe if we do a GSP uh, <laughs> Q and A, we can go back to that. Uh, so Karen sells clothes is asking: okay. Do you experience a summer slowdown, or do you implement things to stop this happening? Yeah, we do. I mean, it, it depends on what sector you sell it in, I think. But for us, interiors does always slow down in the summer. I think whilst the kids are off school, we always notice a slow in sales other than at Christmas. Um, but we to try and combat that, we have um, introduced different lines. So we've introduced garden wares. We do a lot of stuff for the garden to try and idea. combat that. Yeah. And, and last year we did a range of, um, sort of palm leaf bags or with like some pom-poms on and stuff. So, you know, to take on your holiday. And that really helped boost sales. Okay. So yeah. it's just constantly about trying to find something that might plug that. So if you sell clothes, then perhaps, I don't know whether it's bikinis or flip-flops or do you know what I mean? Like try and find that summer, sort of that that thing that, that might make up for the slow in sales. It always yeah. makes me think, when I did my business degree many years ago, that I'm not going to name names, but there was a very well-known ice cream company. Okay. You probably know who it is, <laughs> who in the winter sells sausages. Oh, right. Okay. And I know. You probably yeah. know which one I'm talking about. Um, so the same company doing ice cream yeah. and sausages said that they, they um even yeah. out those pigs and troughs yeah. in the, the sales. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, here's a good question from M Spencer, very mysterious. M for mysterious. <laughs> um, a question. When it's nearly 5 p.m. and there's still work to be done, mm. how do you disconnect? For example, do you have a strict cutoff for you and the employees? Was working a tiny bit later on now. It, yeah, it's really hard when you've your own business to, to shut off, yeah. especially when it's an online business because it's there all the time. Um, so it, it, my sort of stock room is somewhere quite far away from my house. So when it comes to five o'clock, all the staff go home, and so generally I will physically drive home as well. So that's kind of like a, the end of the day, but mainly because that's when all the other staff go home. The problem is once I get home, I'll then spend the evening sat on my laptop replying to messages or yeah. doing listings or doing my accounts, whatever it is you need to do. So having that shut off is really hard um and it's just about yeah it's just trying to manage your time and prioritize things so that um you know you, you can make time for yourself on an evening or a weekend but it isn't easy at all I'm not really sure what the answer is <laughs> no and I think it can be even harder when you work from home yeah um, and, and I do a, a couple of days a week I do work from home and so mm. it is very much there is kind of no real boundary between yeah work and home life so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to um have a business many years ago and I work from home a lot of the time too and I was over the road from um it was Tooting Bank Common. Okay. So I used to just leave the house, go for a walk around the common a couple of times, oh, come good. back and then go, I'm home. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean I find as well, even when I'm on holiday, I still have to do some work. I, I kind of leave a lot of the packing and everything obviously with the guys, but there is a certain amount of work I need to do myself. So to try and manage that, I'll just set myself like an hour or two in the morning and I'll just go through and deal with the most important emails and the most important things I need to do. And and then uh, that kind of allows me to feel more free for the day to not look at my phone. I think, okay, well, the urgent stuff's done. And I know that when I get home, all the urgent stuff's dealt with, there is just the kind of, you know, the catch up to, to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So Josh is asking, when will the... H H and G, so I'm guessing that's how many homes and gardens, gardens. Yeah. store be opening for customers. 
Um, I'm hoping in the next fortnight. <gasps> oh, really? Yeah, Same. yeah. So we're doing the build at the moment, which is really okay. exciting. Um, so the guys, I think, are currently working on sanding down. We're using old antique doors to be our big tables okay. in there. So we're all about recycling. reusing. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. So that's what they're all up to today. So okay. yeah, we're kind of we're slowly getting there. We've got the layout sorted, and most of the bits have arrived. So yeah, soon, very soon. <laughs> so is it going to be a grand ribbon cutting? There will be. There'll be a party definitely with some music Good. and some champagne. For sure, Fabulous. yeah. <laughs> Good, right. Um, so, another question from Amber Trading UK. Hi, do you find you've sometimes bought a lot of a particular stock in anticipation of a huge Christmas season? Uh, season, uh, sorry, sales on that product. Mm. How do you know when it's enough to buy and invest stock? It's not easy. Um, yeah, there have been products that we've bought too many of in the past. And, okay. um, you know, it, it's not often. What we tend to do is we tend to test the market first so we won't buy as many of them. We might have to buy them a bit more expensive, but we'll buy a smaller amount to test it. And if it sells well, then we'll buy um, sort of in bulk. Um, but the problem is you have to do all your Christmas ordering so far in advance. I mean, yeah. our Christmas stock, we've had it for a long time already. It's, you know, it's, it's only summer, but we know exactly what we're selling this year. And it's all ordered and paid for, or most of it's paid for. Um, so it is a bit nerve wracking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do you find that by the time Christmas comes, you're kind of over it oh, because you've been yeah. Christmasing for so long? And I, and I love Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is my favourite season. But this, yeah, in the past few years, I'm kind of yeah done with it, bored of it. It's, <laughs> I don't even get to decorate my own house, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> I do eventually, you have but to, it's like yeah, you get a photograph it's, I know, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so Karen's come back and she said that um, she was the lady who asked about dips in the summer. Okay. Yeah. So she's simply increased her listings by 50% to stop the dips so much. That's a good idea. Karen. Yeah, that is. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, right. So I had another question here. So uh, did you ever try something which increased your sales but actually doesn't make logics? Like sometimes just changing the cutoff time to kick my sales. Oh, right. Okay. I guess that's about any sort of tweaks on your eBay listings that might tell us if that's what you meant. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you mean because we've we've bought products that sell well but actually are a nightmare to pack, and the time oh, that nice. it takes to pack them, and the fact that they might possibly always break or the couriers don't always turn up or, or whatever it is for that particular item, there have been certain product lines that we have discontinued because of the hassle involved. I don't know if that's what you mean. Okay. Possibly. <laughs> Uh, right, so there's another question from uh, Sable. Um, thanks for answering questions. So you've already <laughs> done one there. Can uh, you also see something in particular to grow the business in other categories? Other categories, mm. yeah. I mean, we tend to just sell, we, uh, for us anyway, we tend to do sort of a homewares line, but we do sell things that I think complement that in other categories. So, for example, mm. like I said, we did the summer baskets, which technically isn't a homewares line, um, it's it's a you know, fashion accessory, but for us, um, it meant we could still deal with similar suppliers that we buy our baskets from so it still it didn't feel like it was a whole new market especially when it came to, to suppliers and producers it felt like safe that we kind of we knew the area but it did enable us to branch out into you know other categories on eBay yeah okay yeah and I guess the other tool you can use I don't know to what extent you use this is mm. the Terapig tool yeah that's you part can. of the shop yeah, subscription that, yeah. that can be quite good if you're thinking about branching out and going from ice cream to, to sausages um, <laughs> to look at what else is um what else is selling what well else? at yeah. different times of the year exactly but I mean I also think if whilst it's important to look at what is popular definitely I also think if you've got something that you that not many other people are doing that's also no bad thing um you know actually sometimes if you can be the only person selling that product on eBay then you could be on to a winner you could be yeah until other people <laughs> until notice other people pick it up and then it's time to move on find the next thing yeah and you need to get your supply chain <laughs> yeah. like really good so all of your suppliers um right oh I think we've come on we need some more questions there's got to be some more <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, oh now that's a naughty question we can't ask, answer that one what's your view on drop shipping no it's against eBay <laughs> policy no just don't we don't do it. it we don't do it mm, yeah we do all ourselves <laughs> um right so anything else that you think would be useful to know about entering the awards um so there's a website it's ebayawards.com 
I think it is. Com, yes, <laughs> Make sure there's the correct link yeah. in the description. <laughs> yeah, if you go and look on there, there's a lot on there about how to enter. Um, my advice is try and make your story interesting, like attach photos or maybe a video would be a really fun it's way to get attention. Yeah. Absolutely, because I think you know there's a lot of entries to look through. So any way you can make your stand out would be great. Mm -hmm. um, and don't forget to tell us about if you've you know sing your own praises. I know sometimes you know, especially British people, we like to be kind of modest and but you know talk about your talk about all the amazing things that you've done like talk about if you've had something that you've overcome or anything you found really hard and that you've overcome that or, or something you feel quite proud of don't forget to mention that um mm. because that's the kind of thing we're looking for yeah okay <laughs> right we've got some more questions coming in quickly oh wow um do you offer free shipping we do on most of our products. On certain things, we don't um, because of the way we sell. For example, like our silk flowers, um, we on, on like a bunch. If you're buying a bunch of silk flowers, then we would offer free shipping because probably people would just buy that one bunch. Um, but with the sort of multi stems, all those kind of mixed bunches, we can use like the multi buy tool where you can offer a, a sort of a discount for the more people buy. But if we were to put free shipping on every single one of those, usually there is an element of shipping built into the price on an item that is okay. that has free shipping. Um, and so it just it would actually work out more expensive for the customers. So instead, we prefer to do um, a, a sort of process where a customer can request a combined invoice instead and then we'll just do one shipping price and they can create a whole basket of items okay. we'll work out the best price for them and send them an invoice so that's yeah. what most of our customers do I think that's the thing with the free shipping that yeah. you need to think about what is right for your business exactly. and that the item price can include an element of all of your costs yeah. so you don't break out I don't know storage costs separately or exactly. things like that yeah cool right oh some more questions that can pass mm -hmm. um any advice you can provide for listing optimization? Well, I can provide loads on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should answer this one. I mean, is this in terms of um, good descriptions and using product identifier codes? Yes. All of yes. this kind of stuff. Like, there's, you know, when you're creating your listing, there's all those boxes there. Just make sure you fill in every single one that is you know that is applicable and that you can um mm. using good keywords in your title is really important but don't be too spammy don't use words that aren't actually appropriate well it's actually against ebay policy yeah. to do that so yeah. you can get your listing taken down mm -hmm. so uh, if you're going to use a brand name only use the brand i'm saying this yeah to them, not yeah um, <laughs> if you're going to use a brand name make sure it is the item that you're selling don't say it's like something else because you're going to get your listing taken down it's yeah. a policy violation it's quite bad. yeah um i think exactly what you've just said about mm. listing optimization titles are really important so put all the keywords in that you think people might be searching yeah. for um even if you think somebody might put christmas gift yeah into the search yeah. bar put it into your we title we do use that on ours actually um, yeah. <laughs> but the item specifics don't just do the ones that you're being forced to fill in by ebay because they turn up as the filters when mm. somebody's trying to narrow down their search mm. right we've got loads more questions now three minutes Ooh, what <laughs> Oh, <laughs> nearly running out of time. Um, how? Do, let's look for somebody who hasn't had a question to answer. So Adrian's asking about: Do you use promote your listing, and has this feature increased sales? We haven't actually used promote your listing. No, I know a lot of people that do. Um, it's not something that we personally do. We tend to sell a lot of branded products, so for us, um, the margins aren't always necessarily there, and you know we're kind of happy where we are. So again, it's one of those things where you need to work out: Do you have the margin in your products to kind of take that? You know, to, to because there is a fee, obviously, that comes with promote your listings. Can you afford mm. to do that? Um, and if you can, then I'm, I, you know, go for it. Absolutely. I know yeah. a lot of people that do have good results. And there that, are but. there are some different strategies on this because I've seen a few people talking about it. Where mm. if you've got maybe ten percent to play with, mm -hmm. um, you can decide where you actually spend that margin. Do you yeah. do it as a discount? Do you do it as yeah. shipping? Do you do it as um, promote your listings? Uh, right. So. Cookie and the Haydens, was there a tipping point where you thought, this is time to quit my job? It was, yeah, there was. Um, I'd, I'd got a mortgage with a solicitor's salary. So that was kind of my, my number one thing I wanted to get done before I became self-employed. So I'd done that. Um, and then the sales got to a point where I thought, I can only just about pay the mortgage, but I can <laughs> if, if without my solicitor's yeah. career, that, you know, that, that paycheck. Um, but I thought, yeah, I can just about do it. And I, I felt quite confident that if I had more time to dedicate to the business that I could grow it more and more. So it was at that point where I felt I kind of wasn't really doing either thing to my to my best really kind of you know I was being pulled in both directions and I knew I had to choose 
one and if I focused on that it would do really well um and so yeah I just I you know took the plunge I, I thought I'd give myself four months and if I have to go back to work four months isn't too long a time out yeah. so you'd be very nice in your exit interview yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> great I think we can squeeze in uh squeeze in a question do you, this is from tom do you import any stock from overseas and how have you found the process in comparison to buying from uk suppliers um yeah we do import a little bit from overseas we tend to mainly work with suppliers that do the importing for us and that is so much easier so so much easier yeah um but obviously you pay for their service so okay yeah <laughs> understood yeah um Oh, Rob's asking, uh, he says, I love the images of your beautiful home that you sometimes post. Is this actually your home or is it a show house? It is actually my home. Actually your home. <laughs> Good. Uh, Mysterious Spencer again is asking, uh, when it comes to celebrating milestones, making sure the staff also feel a share of the, the achievement, mm -hmm. the sort of opening, yeah. are there any good recommendations, like a meal out with the employees? Yeah, absolutely. And we did, uh, I try and make them feel as involved in the company as possible. So, for example, in January, I took everyone to Paris for the trade show, because there's a big interiors trade show every year there. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a kind of way that, you know, it was a business expense, it was a legitimate business trip there, but at the same time, it was a really nice way to treat everybody, and, you know, we went out for a nice dinner and did have a day in Paris, and oh, so lovely. you can kind of, yeah, it was kind of win-win for everybody, really, because it meant that um, they could also be involved in the buying process, so they could see the products that I was picking and the trends mm -hmm. that we were looking at, and I think they got something from it as well as a, as a nice trip out, yeah. And I think from looking at your stock, it's got that sort of Parisian feel yeah. to it, hasn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's nice to actually see it all in context yeah. there. <laughs> Right, I think we are now out of time. Um, so thank you all so much for tuning in live. And if you're catching this on the replay, we've missed your question, but you could you could type one in the comments anyway. <laughs> we may be able to come back and do that. So thank you so much, Jay. Thank you, everybody. Um, we get some lovely comments yeah. coming in now saying oh. it was nice um, doing the chat with you. So I think we'll call it a day for today. Okay. Thank you and, very much. And um, we'll see you guys shortly. <laughs>